So I think along with communication and determination, being honest lets relationships work. Stick with me here. That means not being upfront, misleading ladies of interest, and overall just lying to girls you like makes you a pretty terrible guy. Also, I lie to girls that I like. Now, I know that sounds wild, but give me a second to be real with y'all, just real quick. <sighs> See, I don't do this with malicious intent. I'm not here to pull girls or anything like that. No, like, I'm not that kind of guy, honestly. Someone made me realize that this might be really the only way I'll end up in a long, true, loving relationship. Anyways, let me tell you why you should lie to women. There it is. You, you idiot. So first things first, to be fair, what I'm doing, I wouldn't even 100% classify it as lying per se. It's more so manipulating events and facts so I look more favorable to someone I like. So lying. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's still lying. Now, this kind of lying isn't like the really bad typical relationship lying. You know, when you pretty much pretend you're into things you're not into just so you can make them think you're interesting. You know, that's, that's pretty dumb, pretty low bar. Wouldn't recommend doing that. I also do that. What I'm talking about is what philosophers and resident scholars refer to as playing games. So I'll be referring to the resident expert on the topic, Kevin Moore at Spinship on some Quora forum in 2011. Playing games happens when someone's actions don't reflect their true intentions. Two examples, because Kevin Moore is an expert in the field. Frequently, a man will ignore or insult a woman in whom he is romantically interested in. Clearly, he does not wish to ignore her. He wishes to give her his full attention. However, he is acting on the well-established premise that a woman will be romantically uninterested in a man who gives her full attention for nothing. So what does that mean in it took me five years to finish college speak? Being easily accessible is bad. So lie. Lie a lot. Typically my relationship with whoever has the unfortunate luck of being my crush at the time is a lot like my relationship with shoes. So for this next bit, it's gonna sound a lot like I'm gonna be comparing women to shoes, but I'm definitely gonna be comparing women to shoes. Specifically Yeezys, so that might sound a little better depending on what you think of Kanye West. Look, Yeezys are really nice looking, they're premium, and just have a dope shape and feel still talking about a shoe here and i really want it but one of the biggest reasons i want it is because of the exclusivity yeezys aren't something i can just pick up one day and just take home under my arm again i'm still talking about shoes they aren't always there they get snatched up quick and that adds to the desire if yeezys were super available i could grab them whenever i knew they'd be around look it's simple supply and demand if there's availability i'm less likely to be interested and if i'm not sure i can swoop it then i'm more likely to get it look at me kurt ritchie teaching you simple market economics and how to lie to women all in the span of 10 minutes so a similar philosophy goes with dating and getting people interested in you if you seem super interested always available answering their text messages right away you're completely open to always talk to them you think about them every waking moment because you're poor at relationships and you don't usually get attention and after your surgery on your shoulder you're feeling really down because of the medication you're on and you just want to talk to her but she's not are you okay oh yeah uh yeah Basically, if you do all that stuff, then the person's gonna be less likely to wanna give you time because they know they already have it. There's no chase involved. Like, I'm Miles Morales, and Prowler is the girl I left on Red three hours ago. Playing games is pretty essential for the whole relationship thing to work out. In fact, playing games is how I was born. That sounds weird, but, but stick with me here. See, my dad was a player, so he had like multiple girls uh, during college, including my mom, more or less. So my mom's way of bagging him was just going on a date with someone else. He found out and realized he could lose her. So my mom said it could work out if he just dropped all the girls he was talking to at the time. And then I was born. Obviously there were some steps in between, but yeah. So even my parents' marriage is a lot like the shoe metaphor, not only because there are strings attached, but because he wanted her more when he saw that she was less available. And if you still think I'm talking about my butt, here's another example. My friend Ivan, really cool dude, inept at talking to girls, takes a lady he's interested in on a date, right? And we're expecting him to totally blow it because he's a cool dude, but he's totally inept at talking to girls. I mean, originally she asked if her friend could come with them after he explicitly said, let's make it a date. That's like if I asked you, hey, wanna come to this anti-knife parade? And you were like, oh yeah, sure. 
Can I bring my knife? That is literally the one thing you cannot bring to make this still that. Thankfully that didn't happen, but he officially got the no relationship death mark like right there on his forehead after that. But somehow, to our surprise, the next day, come to find out, he learned she had a great time. Which is strange because he's a cool dude is inept to talking to girls. So we're baffled, right? What did this dude do? I mean, this girl's a dime. Dudes are asking her out left and right, apparently. So how did this guy pull it off? No no offense, I And guess what? It wasn't because he had this exceptional game because he bought her stuff. No, no, no. It was because, and I paraphrase, She's been with a ton of different dudes who are always super flirty. This whole nervous, indifferent, chill act of his totally threw her off. And so she was genuinely confused and interested in him. So literally, he set himself completely apart and got her interested because he didn't make a move. Now, granted, this wasn't playing games. This was social incompetency. I love you, Ivan. But we're checking off all the same boxes here. Uh, not being upfront with your feelings, making sure they don't know you're into them. It's pretty much lying. But instead of lying with the purpose of getting them interested in you, you're lying with the purpose of calling your social anxiety. It's like lying with more steps. It's the KFC of lying, now with nine more steps and spices. So y'all see what I mean? This kind of stuff works. And so I apply these practices to my own life. Well, how do I mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. I was talking to this girl that I had previously dated and I was kind of flirting with her because I was lonely. And we're talking about our recent experiences with other people. And during the conversation, she said, well, there was this one person who I did, you know, and it was the best time of my life. You know, I responded since we're exchanging experiences here. Oh yeah, literally the same. I met like the love of my life last summer, you know, this girl named Ashley, and we kinda did it too. We proceeded to have a really decent conversation, kinda left with some hope for what we could have. I like this girl, she's a cool girl. I wouldn't do anything. I'm talking about lying, but I wouldn't lie to her. Anyways, I lied to her. Ashley wasn't real. I mean, what do I look like her telling me about her past experiences and I tell her, the truth. Yeah, I just made YouTube videos in my room all summer. The only girl I've interacted with is my artist, who I literally pay to have conversations with me. I would look like a less suitable dude to her if I didn't have my own thing going on. I made myself look more exclusive, like she wasn't my only option, because she definitely was, because I'm very sad and lonely, and it kind of worked. We talked often, and she talked to me about what was going on in my life like it was real. And I can definitely say it helped us continue some interest in each other. Another example, I was texting this girl I was into at one time. We were supposed to call, which is a mid A tier dating activity, way above regular C tier talking. So we were supposed to call at nine, but like 10 minutes had passed by and I haven't heard a peep. And then she texts me like, yo, I have to do something else first. And I said, okay, and waited. Very bitterly, but I waited. And let me tell you, as time went on, I got pretty salty. 10 minutes, 20, 30, an hour. And then before you know it, an hour and a half goes by, having me on hold. And then 11.30 hits and boom, up oh, here's the call from her. You know, I should just pick up the call because that's the right thing to do despite what she did, it's fine. Anyways, I didn't pick up the call. I didn't want her to think that I'd be available. And I get how shallow that sounds, but trust me, it's fine because I'm a shallow person. I didn't want to talk to her with her thinking that I'm available, which I was. But still, but guess what? It worked. She felt sorry and wanted to talk to me more and we didn't have that issue anymore, which makes me sound super manipulative, but it's okay because I am. That's really how I rolled. Roll. I still do all that. Like when I text a girl, I wouldn't text them back right away. I double the time or wait five to 10 minutes before I hit them back. What do I look like texting you promptly? And guess what? I always saw results. I mean, one night I was at a party and the girl I was talking to at the time was dancing with me and two other guys in my face. Like in rotation, guy two, then guy three, then me. It was like a merry-go-round, but for 18 and up. And this shouldn't have been an issue, you know, since we were together. See, the only girl I had been dancing with that night was her the entire night because I hate talking to new people, let alone asking them to move in a circle with me. But seeing her have me as just another option whenever she wanted wasn't a good feel. I mean, what do I look like being an easy option? So I looked around and I did the same with two different girls. And I know me just saying the sentence makes it sound easy, but that was a Herculean effort. I was dying inside. I hate talking to strangers, let alone dancing with them. Honestly, I just wanted to sit in the corner by myself and sip some juice. But I literally beat social anxiety just to play games. 
And what's wild is that it worked. Like she came up to me a little bit later saying, I see you dancing with those girls and not me. Yes, I hope you did. I specifically did it to spite you. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Look, I know I sound incredibly bitter right now. Usually people see playing games as childish, right? And it's true. Like, why can't we just be honest and upfront? I mean, look at me. I'm the biggest hypocrite of all time. If a girl came up to me and was like, hey, I want to date you. I think that's my future ex-wife right there. I I'm set. Like, usually honesty is the best policy. So what's up with this? <sighs> well, the problem is that, yes, all this stuff is bad. I agree. It is. I hate it. But... It works. I mean, I gave examples earlier. It works. And that sucks. <laughs> like a lot. <sighs> so how'd I get like this? Well, I got one more story for you. There is this girl that I was really into probably like during my high school year before I, you know, committed to the lying lifestyle. And she had all my time. And best of all, I let her know that I liked her right from the get go. And it seemed like she liked me back. And this wasn't one of those things where, oh, maybe she likes me back or maybe. No, like she explicitly told me too. I think you're really cute. I remember the message. She'd asked me to go out on dates. And I don't know, I was really into her. But before you know it, over time, she kind of just stopped messing with me. Started talking to other guys and leaving me on red. We established that we had something and then she kind of just did something else. She played me. She ignored my text didn't want to hang out and I even saw her going on dates with other dudes that shit hurt and then one day everything just kind of climaxed I definitively remember being at home hopped up on meds because I had a surgery not too long ago my shoulder was messed up or something it doesn't matter it matters the medication makes you very emotional and I just wanted to talk to someone specifically her the girl I've been talking to the most recently my girl made me happiest I guess I sent her like the what's up text just classic just see how she's doing and she left me on red and no lie the mix of the situation and the medication a literal tear left my eye i'm not kidding like i was sitting downstairs alone in the dark low-key weeping because someone didn't respond to a text then a great idea came up what if i wasn't so available? What if I stopped texting her? What if I hung out with other girls in front of her? What if I had other options? And I saw results. I remember the day too, I was just chilling, watching TV, and she sent me something, something along the lines of, I forgot how cute you were. And oh man, she's back. It was so nice to see something from her, finally. Like, the method was right. You know, and I had to respond. I had to respond. You know, she gave me a compliment. It was really nice of her. And we pretty messed up to just do what she did to me. You know, not, not cool at all. No reason I should just leave her on red. Anyways, oh, I- you left her on red. Oh, we get it. Jesus Christ. And I finally understood the power of playing these games. But you know, when I look back on it now, how non-adult it is, ugh, I'm not the happiest about how I've acted. I know what I'm doing isn't the best way of going about this whole thing. It's not really healthy at all, but I really don't see it not working, which sucks. It works and it sucks. So as of right now, all I can really say is have more hope in relationships than I do. Play the middle field as opposed to all the way in the front or all the way in the back. And then maybe with time, your level of bitterness won't reach mine because I know I'm wrong, but no reason to do better. Just saying. Oh, what's up, y'all? I'm too tired to do a bit this time. I, I'm dead. If you like that video, be sure to check out my last one, I Had a Mute Girlfriend. It is a yikes video. <laughs> Just like this one. That's really about it. Um, Be sure to check out my Discord server, hop in there, say what's up, and thanks for making it in this little super long video. Uh, much thanks. So I'll talk to you guys later. Dear God. Ugh. Peace. <laughs>